What's up guys, we're back with another Worth It or Not series. This is episode two. We're gonna be checking out your posts on Reddit to figure out if what you bought, if what you graded, if what you're gonna open is worth it or it's not. So let's get right into it. We do have a quick giveaway. Just like this video, be subscribed and you can win this big shield Gardner from Duelist League. Let's go ahead and hop into your posts. So first of all, we are on r slash 34 which is a subreddit for you guys to post and have me review your cards or what you want to grade or what you bought, etc. Just anything you want to post on there, I will attempt to review it. If there's a ton of posts, I might not get to everything, but I'll try to get to a lot of them. I'm going to go a little faster on them today because I did take like a few minutes per post last time, which made it so I did a lot less. So I'm gonna try and get through a lot more this time. So go check out the Reddit. Let's check it out. What do we have here? First off, we have worth it or not. I won this pre-graded Dark Magician SDY E005. The E stands for euros. So that means a, it's a European copy. For 18, I believe that's pounds or $25 and was wondering if that was worth it. I'm new to collecting bonus promo, Sinister Serpent, WC4 E002. So you got a promo as well. So I don't know OG grading. I don't really know the values yet, but if you only paid $25 for a SDY Dark Magician, plus you had a Sinister Serpent WC4, which is probably like a $5 card. Honestly, you probably can't go too wrong with that. The being graded an eight by a sort of a newer company is usually not gonna be worth a ton of money, but because this is a pretty solid card and you got an extra promo, I mean, it's $25. I'd say it's worth it. We have a worth it or not. Pulled it years ago. It's been sitting in a top loader since. Okay, so we have a ghost rare. This is one of my favorite cards. This is unlimited though, so keep that in mind. Also, one thing we have to consider for this week is PSA did lower their express price to $150. So now we're not looking at a $200 difference. We're looking at 150 grade, which is actually a pretty big deal. I mean, a lot of cards are now worth it that weren't at $200. So if we check out TCG player for the price of an unlimited, it looks to be a near mint ghost rare. We have $80 is the lowest available. So it looks like you could buy one for $80. So you're looking at an $80 card. You're gonna pay $150 to grade it. So do you think it could grade a nine or 10? And would it be worth at least $230 as a PSA nine? So if we look on eBay sold, there are absolutely nothing in terms of graded ghost rares. I checked everything. Then if you look at the listings, you have one PSA seven for 250, but it has not sold. So that price really doesn't mean anything. So it's 100% a guess on this one as to if it's worth it or not. So because it's an $80 card, because it costs $150, I would initially be like, probably not. The only thing you have to consider is this is a ghost rare and ghost rares are extremely collectible. A lot of people like to collect slabbed ghost rares. So if you think it could potentially get a 10, to me, it looked like it was probably a nine. There was a couple of scratches on it. Unlimited nines, not really high demand. So for me, I would personally wait for a lower rate, like a bulk rate or maybe even a regular rate. Uh, I could see why you would want to go express, but for me, I'm going to say not worth it. Worth or not, a couple of first edition Toon Chaos booster boxes seem to be rising in price, but is it worth opening? These boxes have gone up a ton, and I think that they will continue to go up as time goes on. I think they're around like $300 right now. They were initially, for, you know, $50 on release, but very quickly went up. For the first edition, it was a pretty limited run. So these are actually really nice boxes to hold on to because they made a limited first edition run because of all the COVID issues and everything. They couldn't print a very large run like they usually would. So there's just not a lot of these boxes that are gonna be around in a couple of years. So personally, I would say hold on to them. You can pull some really awesome cards that are worth a ton of money, like Blackluster Soldier First Edition Collector Rare, Stardust Dragon, you know, all stuff like that. The uh, Toon Blackluster Soldier, everything like that is really cool. But I would say if it's worth it or not to open, I would say it is not worth it compared to what you can get for keeping them sealed. Worth it or not, first edition Ghost Raw, I pulled from one booster box. Actually, I pulled another one a few days later when I bought three loose packs. The other one has the ding on the corner is probably not worth it. Okay, initially I'm checking this out. This card has a lot of print lines. I'm just gonna say not worth it. Right now it's not worth it. This card is extremely hard to grade. PSA has only graded one Rage of Raw Ghost Rare. So if there's any sort of print lines, it's getting a nine at, at best. And a nine, I think technically is a high price, but I think that you'd be better off waiting. If we're looking at the numbers though, I think the PSA nines might actually make your money back. But honestly, I think this one would get an eight. So I think your worst case scenario is an eight or a seven. So personally for this one, I would say hold on to it. Maybe greater when the lower services come back. Worth it or not, first edition German Cyber Dragon I bought for 120 euro. No, is this euro? Yeah, this one's euro. 120 euro a few months ago. So are you, I don't know if he's asking if it's graded, like worth grading or if it was worth the price. So we're just gonna go with the price here. 
120 euro, which is, I think, maybe $150, maybe a little bit less than that. I think it's 1.17 to a USD, so it'd be a little bit less than 150. It looks pretty clean from these pictures. Uh, so I would say it's definitely worth the price for sure that you bought it for. And then in terms of grading, I see the centering is a little bit off. It's a little bit skinny up here compared to down here. And also there is edge wear. So I think this would get maybe an eight. So I would probably not grade it for 150. An eight is not worth the $150 price tag. Worth it or not, I have a first edition seal 2002 LOB blister. What should I do with it? Open the blister and weigh the pack. Give me options. Your last option, open and weigh the pack, is basically not an option. If you have seen my videos, glossy packs do not weigh accurately. I've had some that have weighed accurately and some that have not. It's in the air. So weighing it does you really no good because you have no confidence in whether it worked or not. And also it's only one pack. And a lot of people don't know this, but you need to have the entire booster box to actually weigh accurately. People think you can just weigh one pack and compare it to other numbers. It actually doesn't work like that because boxes have varying weights each. So it's going to be different. So I would not open and weigh it. It's a pretty rare item in this third party blister. It's pretty cool. So if you want to risk it and go for that big pull like the Blue Eyes White Dragon, you have about a 1 in 120 chance to pull the Blue Eyes White Dragon, which is not great. You know, it's a pretty small chance, less than 1% chance. But if you do hit it, you get a great return. And of course, as with everything sealed, it's not really worth it to open in terms of the price. That thing's probably worth $1,500, $2,000 as it is. So you would have to pull like an LOB Ultra Rare and grade it at least a 9 to actually make it worth it. For some of them, a 9 wouldn't even be enough. So opening LOB is not worth it. I do it a lot because the gamble, it's the gamble. That's kind of what makes it worth it, you know, because you have the chance to pull something good. In terms of actual monetary value, you're almost never going to make your money back. You can grade the comments, however, but we've got to wait until they actually give us a reasonable service where we can actually afford to send the comments in for not $150. So for now, it's not really an option. So for that one, I'm going to say not worth it as well. So we've got a lot of not worth it's today. Worth it or not, I pulled the Iris Sword Soul in a Donna Majesty booster box. Keep it, sell it raw, get it graded when the price goes down, if ever. Do not grade this. This is absolutely never worth grading for $150. This is a $25 new card. For new cards, you don't want to grade most of them. Things you would consider grading. Starlight rares, new ghost rares that are like Dark Magician, you know, something iconic. But if it's a brand new card like Iris Sword Soul, which is a cool card and everything, it's brand new. It has no nostalgia factor. It's only $25. It's not very expensive. And it's just like a meta card. So if you grade something that's meta, it can no longer be played in a deck. So it doesn't really have a lot of value to be graded. And even if it was graded, if you got a nine on it, I mean, it'd probably be worth like 50 bucks at most. And like you just spent $150. So if anything, if you really wanted to grade it, you have to wait until the $20 rate. That's it. That's maximum you can spend grading on this thing. For keeping it or selling it raw, it depends on if it actually becomes a staple or used in a meta deck, like a really powerful deck, like tier one, tier two, when people start paying a lot because they really want to use that deck because it's really strong. Right now, I think the Sword Souls are very new, so we don't know if they're actually going to be really good or not. I think there's some speculation if they will be. If they are, then maybe it'd be worth it to hold and then go up. But if they flop, you know, it could tank to, you know, five bucks or something like that. It's all about meta speculation, and I am personally not great at that. I don't do a lot of meta play, so I can't really give you an answer to that. Worth it or not, I had this card for a while, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, Secret Rare JMP. I was wondering if it was worth grading. It's not a mint card, I think. It would be good to know what you think, because I don't have grading experience. So I think you nearly, you almost answered your own question. So you said, it's not a mint card. So for this card, I believe it's around a $30 card. Let's double check. Okay, so it looks like they're selling $20 for a light play, $15. I don't want to click on everything, but I'm guessing like light play is 15 to 20 bucks. So near mint's maybe 30, so I was about right on that. Let's check the pictures. We have, oh, we have damage right there up top. So that right there is going to give you like a five. So you're grading a PSA five right now. So you guys, I think, know the answer to this. So if it is a $30 card, it's moderately played. You know, it's got a big ding up there. Uh, yeah, that ding is basically, looks like most, and then there's a little spot, but most of the damage. But that kind of spot right there, and then just that big ding is going to get you like a five. So you're getting a PSA five, $30 card for $150. I think you guys know that one is not worth it. But the reason is, I mean, you don't want to spend $150 for a $30 card, have it come back, and it's still worth $30. You know, $150 for nothing. The only reason is, a lot of people did not listen to the disclaimer last time, but this series is about if it's worth it for your money or not, not, not necessarily your nostalgia. So anything you want to grade for nostalgia, I would still advise waiting for the cheaper rates, but if you really just want it for this, for yourself, just to slab it up, I mean, there's no point in asking me then, because I, like, I don't need to tell you if it's worth it to you in nostalgia. So yeah, that, just to get that out of the way. Worth it or not, recently obtained this beauty. The box is a bit roughed out, but it's still in factory sealed product. 
worth opening and grading Blue Eyes White Dragon or not. So with these, it depends on what you think the blue eyes could get. So if you could like, if you're able to see in there and check out the centering, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't, um, then maybe you could tell if it has a 10 chance or not. The problem with these decks is a lot of times they come out with stuff on the back of the blue eyes and they're all instantly like eights or nines. And if it's an eight or a nine, it really makes it a lot less worth it. But the potential of the 10 is really high. So a 10's around 12 to 15,000. I don't know exactly where. Kind of jumps between in between those numbers. And let's check out what the decks are going for. I think they're like 5,000 or something like that. Okay, I'm not seeing any first editions on listed or sold, but I think they're around five to six grand. So if you were to grade the Blue Eyes White Dragon PSA 10, it would be worth about double your starter deck. However, if you got a nine, let's check that out. Okay, so we see an eight here. An eight is $1,550, so I don't see any nines. A nine was sold for less than that. This was a while ago, though. This was July. So if it was $1,500 for an eight, maybe a nine's like three, four, or five grand, something like that. Um, a nine might get you close to breaking even. So you have a good chance at breaking even if it gets a nine, and then you could double your money if it gets a 10. So honestly, I think this is one where because the box is a little roughed up, it might actually be worth it to check out the blue eyes. If it is off centered and has something on the back, it's going to get the eight and you're going to lose money. But that's usually I say if it's worst case scenario, but for this, you got to take a little bit of a risk. I think it would be worth it. Oftentimes, there is a lot of PSA 10 quality cards in the starter deck Kaiba. So it could be worth it if you want to not keep the box sealed, but it is kind of cool to have the box. You may get that 10 and double your money. So I'd say it's worth it. Go for it. Worth it or not, recently picked up my first Ghost Rare Red Dragon Archfiend first edition. This card looks clean at the front, but the back has some dings and scuffing. Wondering if it would still be worth sending to PSA for grading. Even if it got an eight, I would be happy with just for the collection. Okay, so you answered your own question. I was going to say you answered your own question. It would be worth it. But I think you're asking if it you want it to at least get an eight, if that's what you're asking. Now I'm looking at the car. I saw this on the replay. That, that kind of changed what I was going to say. This is not an eight. Uh, the front looks good. But when you get to this back, I mean, wait, let me see if I can pause it right there. Boom. Okay, I can't. That gets in the way. There's a, there's a big gash right here. That's going to really kill the grade. And then there's some lines like this. So that gash right there is going to make it like a seven, six area. So if you're looking for a minimum eight, oh, and then there's more there. Yeah, that's at least a six. So if you're looking for better than a six, then it's not going to happen. And then in terms of the money, it's definitely not worth it because of getting a six or whatever. So I would, if you want to slab that one up, save it for the $20 rate. Not worth it. Worth or not, really old promo and old I duelist ID cards. Is this for grading? I don't even know if you can grade these. I don't think you can grade duelist ID cards, honestly. They look cool though. I'll give you that. Worth it or not, we got another Obelisk, the Tormentor, Secret, Pharaoh Secret Rare. So the, these are the same thing for all the Pharaoh Secret Rares. They're not really worth it 200. They're more so worth it at 150. I think these are one of the things that it really like went from not really worth it to maybe they are worth it now. They would, they're extremely worth it if they are, you know, $100 or less. If they're 150, I think borderline, but I think if you think it's a nine to 10 candidate, then I would you know, maybe send it in because one, it'll be fun. It'll be an experience. If you get the 10, it's awesome. And it's definitely worth $150 more if you get a 10. I even think the nine should hold up fairly well. So I think, yeah, it's it's probably worth it to send it $150 now for the Secret Pharaoh's Rare, which by the way is the name. I did not, I actually mentioned that in the last video and cut it out. A lot of you guys asked me. So yeah, the Secret Rare name up here, the silvery name means Secret Rare and the Ultra Rare is the gold name. Worth it or not, Beckett. I don't know a lot about OCG, so I, I can't really help you there. I would say check out eBay, check the prices, and then for Beckett, their prices are still really high, So, and I personally don't really like Beckett personally at all, so I wouldn't want to pay a lot for, for them unless it's like a really valuable card that you think could maybe get a black label. That's about the only time I would use them. Worth it or not, G311 Secret DMG worth crossing, grading to PSA. Another one that is OCG. However, I can't say about cross grading. It is usually very tough to send something in the case and have them actually cross it over. They do it sometimes, but it needs to be very, very pristine. And because this has a nine edges, I can almost guarantee they would not cross it over because they see, oh, this is one of their weakest 9.5s. We're not going to make this a 10 at PSA and make us look weaker. You know what I mean? That might not be part of their thought process, but I can almost guarantee it is because they're thinking, you know, like, do we really want to be like the weak 9.5 is R10? You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't think it would be worth it. Maybe if you cracked it and resubbed it, but based on those subgrades, it looks like you would have a small chance. So maybe just keep it in the Beckett slab. It, it looks good as a 9.5. Worth it or not, they would all have small things that bring down the grade. Vampire Lord is the only one that seems perfect to me. Okay, so we have a change of heart from Metal Raiders First Edition. That's a good card to grade if it's minty. Vampire Lord First Edition Dark Crisis. I like that. Exodia Necros First Edition Dark Crisis. Awesome. 
And uh, we've got uh, Blue Eyes Tune Dragon. What language is that? First edition. I, that might be, is that German? I think a flage, or it's probably not how you say that, but I think that means German. Edition in German, at least. Okay, so let's see. Exodian Necros. I mean, honestly, that card looks really clean. The centering looks good on the front. I, oh, there it is. Okay, not worth it. It's not worth That one's not worth it. Man, that's a bummer because that card looks good. Uh, it looked good in the binder, though. Okay, so for the German ones, uh, is that SRL? That's actually cool. First edition SRL German. That, that corner doesn't look great. Uh, and then being German, it's worth less, unfortunately. So I probably would not grade that. Certainly not grade that one. Okay, yeah. If it's got something like this, you should, should not grade. It's not worth it. That's going to get like a four. Uh, Vampire Lord... Okay, from what I can tell so far, it looks good. Maybe a slight widening there, but I, that wouldn't discourage me so far. Okay, there's no extra picks, so I can't really tell. But if it centering may be a little off, I would guess a 9 just based off of this. There might be a little line right there, a little whitening there. And then the centering, I think that might bring it down to a 9. But then I, don't, I don't know what the back looks like. It could be worse. And then uh, the fact that you said small things and then this was there makes me wonder if this is actually in great shape. I'm not sure. This has a little damage there. And yeah, that would that would bring it down to like an eight. So maybe the Vampire Lord, but Vampire Lord nines are not worth that much. So honestly, I would not grade any of these at 150. Maybe at $20, you send some in, uh, maybe like the Vampire Lord at $50, maybe even. But uh, yeah, I would not send these in. Worth it or not, first at MFC, is it worth grading? Also very tempted to rip it. Okay, if you're going between those, your best option is to grade it because graded packs have actually gotten pretty expensive. However, you're going to have to wait a very long time because they only have their most expensive service up. I think it's like $200. You have to pay $200. Uh, you're going to have to wait like a year. And honestly, paying that much and waiting that long, it kind of takes away a lot of the value that it's going to bring you eventually. It's more of like a park your money somewhere and wait to get more. So if it is a... Let's check it out. If it is a... I don't know if that's a DMG pack or not. If it's a DMG pack, maybe go for it. If it's a Diffusion Wave pack, do not open it. Not worth it because you can only get the uh, the worst secret rare. You can't get the DMG, so you need to know the IPC for that one. If it's a DMG, I, you can maybe go for it. You might have might be worth the risk. It's probably it's probably not going to be in there. But if you want to gamble for that big one, but if you are going to gamble, make sure it has the Dark Magician Girl potential. Otherwise, definitely not worth it. Worth it or not? Video to go along with my posts. Okay, here it is. Pack Fresh, MP1, Cosmo Queen, and O2 Unlimited Buster Blader. I've pulled both, and they have been sleeved in card savers since then. Probably wouldn't great Buster Blader, but just wanted to throw it out there since he's so elusive to Rux. That is true. We did finally pull, like, two of them, though, which was, or was it three? No, we pulled three, which was awesome. We broke the streak. Cosmo Queen, McDonald's Pack, one of my favorites. However, they don't have high value in PSA. This is one that I would definitely wait until uh, a lower rate. But... I really love this card and I would definitely grade it when you can for a lot cheaper. The Buster Blader, same thing. It's it's just not very expensive being unlimited, but I would definitely grade it. If it, I mean, the centering looks fairly decent on both of these cards. It looks like their surfaces are very clean. Maybe a little, that would probably get a nine because of that little bit of a foggy back, but sometimes they get away with that. So yeah, I would grade those maybe like a bulk and Cosmo Queen, maybe even for like 50 bucks or something. These are my favorite cards that I own. Stop playing Yu-Gi-Oh! years ago. I will never sell them. I wanted to get them graded for myself, but when the prices go down, okay. You think they look good enough? The blue eyes that I want left is SM51. Okay, so this is another, this is some other foreign ones. I think this is from that deck, yeah, the EX deck that I opened. But the EX is the cheaper one, I think. I think I opened the original and there's an EX version. So for these, when the prices go down is what you're asking. It looks like they're very clean. When prices go down, I think grading blue eyes is a no-brainer for 20 bucks. It doesn't matter what it is. It's going to be super cheap. There's a little spot on this one. Even if they get nine, I think they're totally worth the $20 send in. So I would definitely send these in oh, at the lower price like you were saying. First set summon skull worth it or not. Okay, this one's... Ooh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Okay, I can't see the back too well. The lighting needs to be on it. Yeah, like this. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth it. There's a little bit of scuffing right there I can see. And that, okay, and that, okay, you're probably looking at a nine at best, but summon skull, 150 bucks, you get a nine. What, what would an eight be worth? Let's check out the eights real quick. Nine goes for $1,300, $1,400, something like that. It's gone like that twice. It's almost definitely not going to get the 10, so we can't include that. Also, it's PWCC, so you know how that is. But it looks like nines, that's a lot lower on that nine. That was July, okay? So at 150, you're looking up to increase like, you know, $1,000. It's probably, no, it's probably like a three or $400 card. Yeah, $900,000. I don't know what an eight would go for. Let's see if we can find an eight. And is there any listed? 
There's no eight sold and eight there's up for a thousand. That's too much. It's not going to sell. So maybe like five, 600 bucks. I mean, I think your minimum, you're like breaking even. So I would say for the summon skull, I'd probably send it in for 150. I mean, it's worth the risk. You could get a nine. You'd go up quite a bit, I think in value. So I'd go for it. Worth it or not, DMOC pulled from Force of the Breaker Special Edition. Noticeable print line on the reverse with slide off centered border. Also an MRDEN Mirror Force pulled from FL1. Small circular printing error on the middle right side of pick. Perfect reverse side. Okay. So the front here, from what I can tell, centering is, yeah, it's it's, it's off from top to bottom. It's not horrible. Back with noticeable print line. So where's the print line? I honestly don't see the print line. Oh, there it is. Okay, there it is. Honestly, something like this can get away. Like that's not too big of a deal. I would still say it gets a nine because of the centering. Um, but what was this first edition? No, this is... E oh, E N. Okay. So these are E N. All right. So they're E N. So they're very niche. They're very niche. What E N means is this E N uh, abbreviation right here. So they're actually a 2004, 2005 print of the cards. Actually the invasion of chaos might be like 2007 because it's force of the breaker, but mirror force is the 2005 edition from FL one or master collection one. So these are, I would say for 150, not worth it, but I, I would definitely grade these because people really do like these E N's a few people. Or um, you could just keep them, you know, in the binder. But they're definitely not 150 worthy, but maybe like 20 or 50 dollar worth. I would grade them at 20 for sure. All right, look, we're we're wrapping it up. A couple more maybe. BLVO Trishula Good Center with no discernible scratches on the obverse or reverse of the card. Also, the Utopia also nice centering, no det detectable scratches on both sides of the card. Both cards have very nice rounded corners. Possible at 910. Okay. Because these are 910s, uh, I like grading Starlights. A lot of people say, don't grade anything new. You shouldn't grade new stuff. I mean, it's like a three, $400 card. So if it's like a $400 card and it gets a 10, it's going to be worth like a thousand bucks. The nines, however, you're not going to make a lot of money. So you got to keep that in mind. You're either going to break even or lose a little bit. However, if you think, I mean, these look very, very clean. I am pro grading Starlights if you think they get 10, even though there's, you know, a lot of them out there, but they're very hard to pull. Eventually, no one's going to be pulling them. People only pull these right when they come out and then nobody pulls them after that because they're so hard to pull. It's got to be, you got to open multiple cases to even get a starlight much less the one you want you guys have seen my stardust series i would say go for it send them in centering looks good services look good i would send it in your worst case scenario you get some nines but i think if you get a 10 you definitely like double your money which is really good worth it or not we have a legendary dragon of white here this is one of my favorite cards rhyme style actually gifted me a psa 10 of this which is really cool i love the prismatic secret rare this is from world superstar so it looks like the card is pretty clean on the front the back maybe a couple print lines but this looks like a solid card we got to check the price though. Okay, so for first edition, Italian, Italian, Italian. Okay, so if we get to the English copies, lowest is 56 plus $2 shipping, so like $58. Pretty expensive card, but not that expensive. However, we got to look at those PSA prices, see what they go for. It looks like a Gym Mint 10, so for $340 a month ago. Wait, what is this? Oh, it's a nine. Okay, and then $132 for a nine. That basically answers our question. I would not grade this for 150 because if you get a nine, it's worth less than the grading cost, which is not good. So for that card, I really, really like that card. I think it's a great blue eyes card. It's really cool looking. I would definitely grade it at a lower price, but at 150, it's not worth it. This is gonna be our final post. There's still others. I'm sorry I couldn't get to everybody. This is already gonna be a long video. Go make your posts. I'm gonna check out older posts in future videos potentially. So go make another post and uh, I'll check them out in the next week or whenever we do this again. All right, our final post. If I missed you, I might get to you in a future episode. And if you guys wanna be part of the series, check out rsusruxon34 on Reddit and make your posts and I'll try and review them. Worth it or not, Starlight Rare, Black Rose Dragon, and Secret Pharaoh's Rare Raw. Uh, we already talked about Pharaoh's Rare Raw, so you already know what I think about that. Slight scratch on the back of Black Rose, but overall good. So centering looks good. Back, slight scratch. I'm not seeing, is that the scratch you're talking about or is that just the... I don't see the scratch. All right, so if it's between nine and 10, like I've said about the Starlights, and Black Rose is one of the biggest ones. It's an iconic card. This is one definitely worth submitting, I think, especially for 150, because 150 is much better than 200. I would definitely send this guy in. Hopefully you get that 10, because that's a very, very cool card, and we're uh, hopefully gonna see my Stardust coming back soon. I'm really excited about that one. That wraps it up for this episode of Worth It or Not. If you guys are enjoying the series, please like the video. Let me know that you're liking it because last video, I wasn't sure if we were going to make another one, but then so many comments were telling me, I really like this video. I really enjoyed it. I think it was very helpful. So I was like, you know what? Let's go. Let's try episode two. Let's see how it does. If people are still liking it, we'll do another episode. So check out r slash 34 if you want to be a part of the next one. And 
let me know in the comments if you really did like it. Also want to mention, we are getting close to selling out that Magician's Forest booster box. So if you guys are interested in that live stream, I don't know when it's going to be. It just depends on when it sells out. Maybe this weekend or something would be really cool. So go check that out in the description or in the pinned comment or whatever I put it. And you guys can get a pack and we can potentially pull the Dark Magician Girl. And I'll let you know if it's worth it or not when we pull it up. It's going to be, probably be worth it because that card's really expensive. But that's it for this one, guys. I will see you guys later. Peace. Shining Abyss. Ooh, the Revival Jam. Oh, and oh!